One thing's for sure is I was sitting in the very seats that you all are sitting in just two years ago. And knowing that I received my master's degree from such an incredible university, it is overwhelming to know that I'm able to come back here and be your commencement speaker. In that very seat two years ago, I was two weeks away from competing for a dream that I spent seven years preparing for and not knowing in that moment what the future holds. So today, I will be telling you all a very short story about Deshana, a young dream chaser and where it all began. In the summer of 2009, I was 19 years old, working a summer position at Target between my freshman and sophomore year at undergraduate school. I was working in the women's clothing department and I noticed a lady staring at me from across the aisle. I figured she probably had a few screws loose, so I attempted to ignore her very intense stares. She eventually manages to make her way a little bit closer and closer to me where I was working until she eventually walks up to me and says hello. I say the famous target quote, which is, hi, may I help you find something? So now anytime someone says that to you all in Target, you know it's their job to say it to you. <laughs> she then asks me, were you born in this country? And I was immediately offended. And I said, yeah, I was born in this country. And then she says, do you have any kids? I said, no, I don't have any kids. She then asked me if I was married, and then I said, no, ma'am, I am not married. She says, how old are you? I said, 19. May I help you find something? She then says, you are the most beautiful girl I have seen. And I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't work that much with my makeup, but I did the best I could, but thank you. <laughs> and then she says, I think you could be the next Miss USA. And I stare at her in pure disgust and said, pageants? You're telling me pageants, like Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality. Pageants? You think I should compete in pageants? I'm in the Army, okay? We don't do pageants in the Army. She then asked me to meet her at Starbucks the very next day before my next shift at Target. And she just wanted to do a little bit of explaining when it comes to what pageants is. And apparently I was a pretty open-minded 19-year-old because I actually agreed to meet her the very next day. The next day she brought this foot tall stack of pageant books and proceeds to convince me to enter into a state pageant three months later. For those who do not know, when it comes to Miss USA, you have to win your state first, okay? So three months later, I compete in my first pageant and I lose. I go back the second year, compete in the state pageant, I lose. Go back the third year, compete in the state pageant, and lose. Go back the fourth year, compete in the same pageant, and lose. I go back the fifth year, y'all, compete in the state pageant and lose. But guess what? I go back the sixth year, guess what happens? I lose. <laughs> I called her on the phone and said, you told me I could be the next Miss USA. And she says, Deshauna, keep working, keep working. Don't quit, keep going back. And in June of 2015, she passes away from leukemia. Six months later, in December 2015, I win Miss District of Columbia, USA. And six months after that, in June of 2016, I become the first soldier to win Miss USA. And you all already know where I'm going with this. At times, our purpose drops in our laps as if the heavens threw it by accident. I ask only one thing of you all today after you leave this building, after accomplishing an amazing goal. Do not fear failure, but please be terrified of regret. As giving up is the birth of regret. After you walk out this door, you will receive a hundred doors shut, slam in your face. You will have a hundred moments that will be filled with someone telling you no, or telling you, thank you for your application, but we regret to inform you that we've chosen a different candidate for this job. You will sit in a hundred different interviews and you will not get the job. The reality of life is that we will all hear more no's then we hear yeses, and we will fail a lot, and I mean a whole lot. 
But what I ask of you today is to not take no for an answer. Don't be afraid of no's. Be afraid of the possibility of a yes that you have prematurely destroyed because you decided to quit before the clock strikes 12. You can ask anyone, friend, family, anybody. I love a good no. Please tell me no. Telling me no is like adding fuel to a fire that is now set ablaze because of your single no. I love additional reasons to work harder. Please give me a reason. So today I challenge you to fight, to work, to not stop here, to believe so heavily in your aspirations that you too will not fear the word no, but instead you will choose to welcome it. Thank you.